All right, today we're going to be looking at the, some of the central concepts of human geography and, and something and skills and applications or concepts they'll be using throughout the semester. Um, so the major themes and concepts of the, or terms and concepts from this video are going to be human geography versus physical geography, which we've discussed somewhat in class, place, region, scale, space, and connection. Um, and so we're going to dig in and going back a little bit to what we talked about earlier, geography was um, really coined as a phrase by Erasthenes, a Greek um, uh, philosopher and, and academic that basically used well, the Latin or the Greek terms of geo and graphy to put together the, to, to write the earth. Um, essentially it is uh, this idea of uh, a science that is intertwining um, uh, both the human characteristics and our interactions with the environment along with the physical environment of our world. And so when we look at geography as a science, it's divided that way into two different fields. Um, the human realm element that is going to focus more on the people, the cultural features like population, um, economic distribution, the way certain cities develop, how we, how we shape the landscape and build up the, the, the cultural landscape on the natural occurring physical um, features of the earth and the environment we live in. The physical side is just that. It's tied to the physical characteristics of the earth, um, the mountains, the, the rivers, the lakes, the oceans, and other natural occurring things as if people were not there. And understanding those, both of those in the, in the way the patterns and the distributions and the impact we have on each other um, is essentially the field of geography. So in this, illustrating these other concepts, I'm going to use the example um, coming from a, a suburb or an area of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, um, one of the bigger urban areas in the world. And so we're going to look specifically at human geography and so the, the cultural features. Again, you can see the characteristics of people, um, the populations, the densities, the built-up landscape along the coast, um, the fact that we have cities near the coast, the, and how we interact with our environment is the human side. Um, and the physical side is going to be those natural features, the land features like this one in uh, Ipanema, um, Rio de Janeiro, which is just a suburb of, and it's called Two Brothers Peak, a uh, natural occurring uh, feature in the landscape. If you looked at the previous picture, you'd see it just in the background. When we focus on geography and the, and the characteristics um, and the questions that we're trying to ask and explore, um, we're really trying to answer three questions in, in terms of where things are, why they're there, and why those locations or those things take are significant or hold significance to uh, geographers or human societies. Um, and so really what they are trying to look at is how every point on this earth um, is unique in some way, but it's also interrelated, especially as we become a more globalized world or more globally connected. And so geography, and especially human geography, is really looking at the, uh, the constant role that globalization has and the contrast between uh, globalization and local diversity. In other words, being more connected or maintaining a sense of unique characteristics. Uh, in terms of the tools geography use, we'll, we'll look at some of the more specific ones, especially in the, in because of the technologies of today's world. But primarily, the, the most important tools that geographers use are maps, and simply because maps tell a story. And depending on what the map is, the theme or the type of map it is, um, is going to tell us a very different story. In looking at how things are unique, um, the two concepts that really define that are going to be place and region. And place is simply just a, a specific characteristic or a, or a point on the earth that is defined by a, a particular a characteristic. It's a, it gives it a, something that is, makes it different. It, makes it, it a, a, a significant, gives it a significance that you won't find elsewhere. Um, in terms of region, is a broader context of um, a combination of cultural and physical features that um, identify a place. Um, and this is generally going to be multiple um, points, but have these commonalities that give uh, a sense of region. And we'll look at some of these examples here in a second. Like place, taking our example already, Ipanema, Ipanema 
uh, Rio de Janeiro we can look at as a specific place. Um, it is on the coast. It's on the Atlantic Ocean. It's in South in terms of a place. It's it's unique in it, that is in South America. Um, it is part in, or near um, rainfor or uh, uh, national parks in Brazil, and making it a unique place in Brazil. If we were to look at the the types of climate that we would find in Brazil. Um, and you can see the distinctive regions based on the climate. The more tropical um, AW, the, the characterized by lots of rainfall and, and high temperatures, um, and the different variations of that that you're going to see throughout the, um, the country. Um, but they, they, ident they create identifiable regions where you would see similar patterns throughout. In terms of interrelated or connected, things that make things um, similar uh, are there are three things that geographers focus on scale the relationship between um, the earth and, and one part of the earth versus the entire thing um, as we look at different characteristics well, t well that becomes very very important in an in, in a conclusion you might have as a geographer uh, space how things are distributed um, whether it's the, f the the physical distance between something or the the what is the gap or the what keep what separates two different um, uh, objects or or places, and then finally connection. What is the relationship um, between uh, people or places um, across a space? How are they how are they connected? So even if it's a long distance or short distance, are there connections? Um, and as we become move into the 21st century, we're more and more connected than ever before. Um, for example, how you're watching this video. Um, the, the internet has created an incredible connection from the most unique and isolated places to the most connected um, in a way that's never happened before in human history. So if we look at some examples, um, this is just taking again from Ipanema um, Rio and, and scale. That being on the beach and seeing um, people on the beach uh, in bathing suits uh, might be very acceptable in, in the local culture, um, but if we take it into different it regions or different places and broaden that throughout the rest of the world, that's not necessarily as acceptable to be as, as exposed um, culturally. So in terms of the scale, what might be acceptable or defining characteristics is going to be very different based on um, the relationship we use in terms of looking at it in a very small or large scale way. Space is how land is used um, between uh, in, a given, in a given place. Um, as you can see here, we see the, the water and the beach and um, some some sparse vegetation and then the highway um, and if we look at the Ipanema again as an example um, an actual beach shot you can see um, exactly the same pattern and so how space is used um, as a way of looking at um, the way humans and human societies interact with the physical landscape and then finally connection um, how are things connected um, if we look at Ipanema as a, as a place that's a growing city and it has an international, Rio has an international airport um, and, and with the other connections that there are throughout uh, the world, um, how do we navigate the barriers, whether it's distance or, or um, physical barriers that might exist between our, our language, cultural, um, di various things, how are we connected with uh, different places throughout the world? So. Just recapping, the you know, highlighting the difference between human and, and physical geography, um, and then place, region, scale, space, and connection.